Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. In today's video we're going to be testing the sulcus sign. And this test is used to test for multi-directional instability of the glenohumeral joint. So what on earth does that mean? So if we think about breaking it down, multi-directional, so that means forward, back, side, etc. and unstable. So we're thinking about a humeral head that's unstable in all directions. And that's what we're testing for. And a positive sign on this test would be what's called the sulcus sign. And that refers to, which we'll show you the setup in the test in a second, but it refers to the amount of gapping you can create between the acromion and the humeral head. So when would we use this test? In our MSK setting, we'll be thinking about people that present with recurrent dislocations or potentially people that have uh, not a very uh, integral rotator cuff because that's also designed to help draw up and suction uh, the humeral head into the glenoid fossa. Thinking slightly beyond that, you might see the relevance with a nerve palsy, so that the nerves that are supposed to be supplying the integrity of the rotator cuff aren't working, therefore it can be an unstable shoulder. And you're going to commonly see this sulcus sign sort of presentation in a stroke patient for a similar reason, except rather than a local nerve palsy, it might be brain related. Right, so that's a lot of stuff. So how do we do the test? The first thing you're going to do, please note, before you start pulling on people's arms, is you're just going to have a look at the symmetry between left and right. And you're looking at the acromion and whether there's a gap dropping down, like a thinning. So it won't be kind of curved like the deltoid naturally will. You'll see like a dip. If you already see a significant dip, you're pretty sure that they've already got this instability at their shoulder. It may not be a good idea to go in and start pulling on it, which is what we're going to do in a second. However, if it's not clear whether they have that or not, we can proceed with the test. And we would start on the unaffected side so that the patient can feel what that's like. And then we're going to go to the affected side. So let's presume we have someone with a history of some dislocations. We don't see this dropping and we're ready to test the affected side. How do we do it? So we're going to get one hand on the distal humerus and we're not going to be too grippy. We're going to use our lumbrical grip. And our thumb or finger, whatever you prefer, is going to be just underneath the acromion so we can appreciate any gapping that's going to occur when we pull the humerus down, which is the test. So from here, I feel the space and then I just draw down. So I'm pulling downwards and you're going to feel a bit of gapping. If it's quite significant, so more than, say, a thumb amount, that is likely to be a positive sign that there is an element of multidirectional instability. You will feel a small amount of movement in a normal healthy person anyway, so it's good to practice so you can feel that motion, so you'll know what abnormal feels like. So is this a test we use commonly in practice? Uh, yes and no. Often from their history and how they present and with your rehab, we don't commonly zoom in on this one a lot, but it still can be useful, particularly if it's not clear what the exact diagnosis is and they've not had other orthopedic exams to support it. So I wouldn't discount it. And so do practice it, learn it and keep it in your toolbox for when you need it. Guys, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again on Clinical Physio.